Words at War. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, presents another program in the series Words at War, dramatizing the most representative books to come out of this great world conflict. Tonight, Wanda Vasilevska's Stalin Prize novel, The Rainbow. Listen. Do you hear that? That sound is a body swinging from a gallows. The body of a 16-year-old boy. It has been there for a month. Frozen stiff in the bitterest winter the Ukraine has known. The Nazis hanged the boy as a warning to the villagers and to the guerrillas who struck with silent fury from the bordering forests. I want you to meet one of these guerrillas. She is Olyena Kostyuk, a woman in her early 40s. Her hair is graying at the temples. Her face is plain, rough-hewn, a common peasant face. She's being questioned at the German headquarters by Captain Kurt Werner, a German by birth, a Nazi by breed. So you are the guerrilla who has come back to the village. You, an old woman. Why did you come back? What were you sent for? Nobody sent me. I came on my own. Why? Answer me. Why? Very well, I will tell you why. You saw that all this guerrilla business was nonsense. You didn't want to take part in it anymore. No, I couldn't anymore. Why? I came home to bear my child. You? Having a child at your time of life? Hmm... Where is your husband? He was killed in the war. I joined the guerrillas, but I didn't tell them about my baby. Nobody knew. Oh, how my husband and I dreamed this child that was denied us. And now it's come and he isn't here to see it. I worked with the guerrillas until it was difficult for me to move about. I returned to the village to give birth to my child in peace. In peace, bah. Who blew up the bridge last week? I did it alone. You lied. We know all about it. You'd better talk. I did it alone. Where are the guerrillas you worked with? Don't just stare. Answer me. Very well, old Yenakoschuk. I can see the sweat running across your temples. It was painful for you to stand, hmm? Well, you will stand till you are ready to talk. Who's that? Just me, Kurt. Prusia, why did you come here? What's the matter? I had to come out. I want you to have lunch with me, Court Dar. I cannot. Don't you see I'm busy? With this old woman? This old woman is a gorilla. She? <laughs> She's about to have a baby any minute. Will you please let us alone, Prussia? Court, let me stay. I'll be quiet. Maybe this will be fun. Very well. Now, you Russian swine, we know you have come from the forest. We know that you have been sent to... How long is it now that I've been standing on my feet? Answer me. Two hours? Where are they hiding? Three hours? The gorillas. Four hours? Where are they hiding? Oh, my body is so they? fearfully. Answer me. My thighs are as Where heavy are as stones. Where are they hiding? The child is in me precious in my lungs. It's so difficult for me to breathe. So unbearable to step on my feet. The room's become dark as though a fog was settling in it. I can hardly see that form in front of me. Is it a man? And there, sitting comfortably in the chair that... that crusts you with that stupid smile of hers. So warm in her fur coat. Sold herself to a Nazi for a fur coat and a pair of silk stockings. Oh, oh, no. I must not faint. No, not here. Not here. How long will you... Will... Does he think we ever are... tell him where our boys are? Do you want to throw oh, your life away? Oh, those questions. Remember, you are a mother. Oh, those questions. Rem... Well? I know nothing of the gorillas. They went away. I don't know where. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Take her to the barn. Let her freeze. Tomorrow she will change her mind and talk. Yo, woman, stand up. Huh? What? 
What do you want in the middle of the night? I, I've been questioned. Take your shoes off and get up. Oh, the captain no. says you need some exercise. Oh. Come on, Hans, help me drag her out. Come on, come on, get on your oh. feet. Come on, woman. Oh. Don't hold me. Come on, come on, make me. Do you see those gallows over there where your Russian brother hangs? You'll run there and back here till we tell you to stop. And when we think you're slow, this bayonet will speed you up. Now run. <laughs> I like her, Fritz. The old woman runs like a plow horse with her nose to the ground. Oh, I'm freezing. It's cold <laughs> enough to drive a man out of his senses. If we keep the old woman out here any longer, she'll be dead by morning and she won't be able to talk. The captain says she's got to talk. Maybe another prod with this bayonet. Ah, you've gotten enough blood out of her. The snow is red under her feet. Let's throw her back into the barn and get to headquarters where it is warm. Wait a minute. What's that? I don't hear anything. No, I'm sure. It's coming from the side of the barn. Eh? Come on, let's look. Uh -huh. What did I tell you? One of them trying to help her. Probably arranging for an escape. It is a young boy. What difference does it make? They're all the same. Are you going to shoot him? No, I'm not going to stand here in the snow and look at him. Stand aside. Now, let's see what he's got there. He was bringing us something. Uh, it is a crust of bread. Captain Warner's headquarters. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's for you, Captain. The Herr Mayor. Mm. Good morning, Herr Mayor. Oh, yes, but I... I... I will... Yes, yes, but... Uh... Oh, the grain? Yes. Goodbye, Herr Mayor. What does he think I am? Has he tried to question these Russian blocks? I'd like to see whether he'd get a word out of them. He calls me three times a day. What information do I have from the gorilla? What about the grain? Sergeant, did the men carry out my orders last night? Yes, Captain. Did that cost you and speak? No, Captain. That all you can say? Yes? No? There was an incident last night, Captain. What? One of the children tried to bring some bread to the woman. He was shot. Good. What did you do with the body? That is the incident, Captain. It has disappeared. How is that? The guards came here to report. Left the body in a ditch outside. When they went back for the boy, it was gone, Captain. Don't! Blunderous idiots! The one who was hit in the body. Yeah. Wait. First, I must get grain. The Mayor says I must get grain. The army must be fed. Send that Mujik Peter Gablik in here. Yes, Captain. They put me in command of this village because I could speak Russian. They thought it would be easier for me to get things out of these people. Ah. <laughs> They're as unyielding as granite. Threaten them, torture them. They say nothing. They look at you and their eyes say, Wait. The day will come. The day will come. You. Wanted me, Captain Werner? Where is the grain delivery I was promised, Gablik? Well, I, I'm doing the best I can. But there, there isn't any grain. Don't act stupid. There was a record harvest. They've hidden the grain. I thought you knew these people. You ought to know the hiding places. Oh, but the storm, the frost, you can't find anything in this weather. Gablik, I saved you from the Red Army. Oh, yes, Captain Werner. You owe your life to me. Yes, Captain Werner, yes. But I have helped you, haven't I? Didn't I inform you about Alenia Costia? I have nothing from her yet. She's not told you about the gorillas. No. Has she? I will make her talk. What about the grain? Well, I have a plan, but I must have military support. Where's my support? Well, then, there must be an order issued. The people must meet in the schoolhouse. of this village have not yet delivered the tax demanded. That is to say, the grain. <laughs> whoever, whoever does not fulfill this obligation to the German army within three days will be subject to... to... Go on, traitor. To the death penalty. <laughs> and wait, wait, there is another matter. The dead body of a young criminal who tried to feed on Lania Kostyuk last night is missing. Whoever knows anything about the criminal... Should report to the German commander. Can we leave now? No. 
There will be five hostages. If the guilty are not found within three days, and if the delivery of the grain does not begin within three days, the hostages will be hanged. Blake, you've been at headquarters half the night now. Why don't you go home? And your work finished? Yes, yes, Captain Verner, but uh, well, there's a storm, you know. It's, uh, it's much warmer here than it is in my house. Ah. And, uh... <laughs> You're shivering with more than the cold. Are you afraid to go home? No, 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 no. It's uh... Captain, it might be wiser, though, to let me have an escort. Even one soldier. I can't spare any men. Besides, it's past the curfew time. None of these villagers will dare stick their heads out. They know you're under my protection. Go home, Gabriel. Yes, yes, Captain. I, I'm going. Well, I risk my neck for those Nazis, and they treat me like a dog. Not even a guard to protect me. That captain thinks everyone's afraid of him. I'm under his protection. I... What's that? Oh, it's nothing. Only a bush. For a second, I thought it moved. Oh, I guess it's only the wind. It's only... Oh, no. You brought... You brought the traitor. Good. Stand up, Gaffney. Stand up like a man. That's asking too much of him. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me, please. Please don't, don't hurt me. Who's going to hurt the old no, please, man? Please, please We've don't. just brought you here to give you some information. All right, what do you want? No, what this afternoon you wanted huh? to know who hid the body of the boy. Criminal, he called my boy. Uh, what was his uh, crime? To bring a crust of bread to a tortured but woman. But I couldn't help it. I couldn't That's help it. That's the no. boy's mother, Gapleek. She'll tell you where his body lies. Go ahead, tell him. Yes, I'll tell you, Gapleek. I followed those Nazi murderers. When they went in to report, I snatched up my boy from where they'd left him, lying in the road. I carried him home. He lies buried under the threshold, where your Nazi friends will never find him. They body. made me do Let's it. Let's not waste time with the trial. No, he no, must no, have no, a trial. Please. Question. Uh, no, Peter no, Goplick, please. you're on trial for collaboration oh, with the Germans. Oh, God. What have you to say? What's the matter? Lost your tongue? Oh, please. You spoke well enough at the schoolhouse. Peter Goplick, you were a kulak and a bandit. Oh, yes, yes, I was, but... You were but against the Soviets it. from the very start, Yes, I know you? I was, but I didn't And as soon as the Germans came, you said... I had to, I had them well, the carrion. Peter Goplick, do you deny your guilt? No, no, I don't deny it, but have mercy, have mercy, please. What is our please, verdict? Please. Death. No, no, Are no, no, no. against no. this verdict? No, 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 no. I've pissed against you. I'll never do it again. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me. Can't even die like a man. Oh, so tired of this thing. Fidosia! Fidosia, isn't my tea ready yet? Would you like to have some tea with me, Fedorsky? Well, can't you even say one word to me? You know, you'd better be pleasant to me or I'll tell Court your secret. My secret? <laughs> I thought that would open your mouth. Well, Fedorsky, I know all about your visits to the gully where your dead son lies. You know it's against the law to bury a soldier of the Red Army. Against what law? It's just another horror thought of by the fiends you consort with. Not even the dead is sacred to them. Well, if you will be nice to me, I may keep your secret. Look, have I ever done you any harm? Have I ever harmed anybody in this village? No. But none of you will speak to me. The children run for me as though I had the plague. What you've got is worse than the plague. What did you want me to do, Star? I never had anything, and now I've got a chance. Captain Werner will take me with him to Dresden. Your husband is a lieutenant in the Red Army. I haven't heard from Sidorsha in months. He must have been killed. I mean, what's the difference? I like Captain Werner. He's nice. He brings me things. Furs and stockings stolen from our people, just like he's taken my house and made me scrub for you. But the day will come. <laughs> oh, you're such a fool. <laughs> you still dream the Red Army will come back. Don't you know the Germans will conquer everything? They'll never conquer us. 
Our boys will come back. Then you'll see. You'll see. That's Captain Werner. All right, Fedos, you can go out to your kitchen. Good, darling. Come in here. What took you so long? Uh, here, let me help you off with your coat. That old fool, the black. Took some hours to get a few figures down on paper. Then he had the nerve to ask for an armed escort. <laughs> as if anyone in this village would dare lay a hand on him when they know he's under my protection. Stupid old Gaflik. <sighs> I'm tired. Are you? Oh, they are my your call again. Tomorrow I must get that information from that Kostchok woman. The Willa. Well, think about it tomorrow, Kurt. Aren't you going to kiss me? I'm cold. You must blast the village knows nothing but blizzards. <laughs> you, housekeeper. Yes, Captain. You sure you have enough wood for the fire? I'm going to wake in the morning and see. Yes, Captain. I'll get you your wood for you. Who's that? No. No, it can't. You're from the Red Army. Don't you remember me? Russia, Lieutenant Russia. Yes, yes quickly. Quickly, the little woman. Oh, at last, at last, how long we've been. Your wife. I know, I know. Never mind her. Please, there isn't much time. I've been hiding for hours. There's some information I must have. Yes, yes, yes. Everything I know. Where? Where do they keep their ammunition? You're going to attack. Yes. Yes, no. I have this map of the village. I'll throw my flashlight on it. Yes. Tell me. Where are the guns? Here. Here. Right here on the square. By the church. Mm -hmm. How many? Let me see. Yes. Four guns. And here at the edge of the village, there are different guns, smaller ones. And I aircraft? I think so. They point upward, little thin guns. Yes. Uh, any machine guns? Oh, yes. All along these houses. They've made holes in the walls for the machine guns. How many men? About 200, I think. Will you attack soon? You must. You must. They've taken five hostages. In three days, they'll be hanged. Oh, we'll keep up our spirits. We know you'll come. But it must be soon. You understand? It must be soon. Yes, Fedosia. It will be soon. It hasn't been easy for us. But we'll wipe these beasts from our land. Who stays in your house? The commander, Captain Werner. Anyone else? Your wife, Prustia. Time will come. Your, your information has been very valuable, Fedosia. It's been only written in time. Do you know they have arrested Olenia Kostchuk? Oh, yeah. Yes, they've thrown her into the old barn at the end of the road. She is with the child. Her child may be born tonight, and no one can go to her, no one can help her. We'll make her pay for us, yeah. I'll be back. So, till then, keep your silence. Good morning, Captain Werner. Good morning. Is that Quarter's phone? Yes, sir. Why didn't you call me? I was ordered not to. Ordered? What did they call? Well, they wanted to know whether the arrested woman had made a statement. And what did you say? I told them you weren't able to get a statement out of her. You don't! You... I will not make any reports until I tell you, do you understand? Yes, sir. Has there been any grain delivered? No, sir. There's Gab Blake. He said he knew these people. He... He's not yet reported, sir. Well, what are you standing there for? Get him. Uh, what about the woman? Did you bring her here? Yes, sir. She... She has a child, sir. Oh. Send her in. All right. Go inside. Come in. Come in, oh, Yena Kostyuk. Here. Let me help you to this chair. So, you've born a child. Boy, Olga. Sorry. Oh, you sound thirsty. Yeah. Have a drink of water. That's enough. Uh, You're a healthy, living son. Good. You would like to keep him alive, of course. What? Last night, somebody tried to bring you bread. Who was it? Uh, I, I don't know. Think. It was a boy about 10 or 11 years old. One of the villagers' children. Oh, they... They all have children. I don't know who it was. All right, all right. Where do you think the gorillas might be now? I... I don't know. Somewhere in the forest. There are many forests around here. Which forest? Uh, that's all I know. In the forest. When you came to the village, which road did you take? I... I don't remember. There, there was snow all around. Listen, woman. You're a mother now. You have a son. You want him to grow up? You're a mother. You want your son strong and healthy. 
I have a son. I have him here wrapped in my shawl. I keep him warm against my bosom. I feel his heart beat against my hand. I see his tiny round red face. I see his little button of a nose. When was it? Last night? I thought it was death tearing at me. But it was life. It was my son. It was fulfillment. What is the sickness? My son. Listen to me. I have a son. Listen to me, Olena Kostyuk. What is the sense in suffering when you can live peacefully with your son? There's no point in struggling. The Red Army's as good as smashed. The war's almost over. Your guerrillas in the hills have no chance of escape. I will forget that you ever worked with them. All I want you to do is to answer a few questions truthfully. I have told you all I know. You might at least consider your son. You have no right to take away his life. What do you mean? By your silence, you condemn yourself and your son. Look, I'm going to light this cigarette. When I have finished smoking it, I want your answer. Think it over. Captain Vera? What is it now, Sergeant? Kaplik is gone. He is nowhere to be found. Idiot! First the boy's body disappears, and now that Mujik. He must have left the village last night. What kind of sentries do I have? Is it as easy as that for a man to escape? Well, there was a blizzard last night. Ah, I knew that sniveling old fool was not to be trusted. Now I have the stone of a woman to deal with. Look at her. A day-old child in arms. You'd think she would collapse by this time. You'd think she'd cry out for mercy, at least for a child. Well, woman, have you made up your mind? Uh, I don't know anything. Help me, scum! I treat you like a human being, and this is your answer. I'll show you. Sergeant, take the brat. Put it on the desk. Call the woman. There's just one bullet between life and death. This is your only son. I have many sons. What are you saying? There, in the forest. They're all my sons. My sons. Oh. 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 This was my son. This, this body whose face is a gaping wound. Whose little hands are still clenched. Whose tiny feet are still pink and white. Mm. You died, my son, but, but in the forest, they still live, hundreds of them, men and women and boys, they live, and their sons will live in peace. Captain Vanna speaking. Uh, yes, I'm a you. I will get the information. Yes, I'm in the midst of questioning her now. No, 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 no. There's no need to send anyone. Yes, yes, I, I will immediately. No. Does nothing move you? I ask you for the last time. Where are the gorillas? I do not know. Don't you even value your own life? It doesn't matter now. Sergeant! Yes, Captain. Take her out. Execute her. At the square, sir. No. There are enough rotting bodies around. Throw the woman and the child into the river. Who's there? It's me. Oh, well, then it's Eroshka. Oh, you've come back sooner than I dared hope. Yes. Is my wife in there? Yes. She is alone, Captain Wayne. Yes, I know. What about the sentry? There is no sentry. Prutia. Prutia. Hmm? Oh. Wake up, Prutia. Prutia. What do you... Yerosh! No! Hi. 
I must get to German headquarters, Felicia. That was a signal for my men. Wait, let me come with you. No, no, you can't come out in the midst of the battle. You'll need me. I can help tend the wound. Quickly, then. Quickly, it's almost daylight. Stay back here, Fedosia. Keep out of range. Oh. How's it going, men? We've surprised their outpost batteries, Lieutenant Zerosha. Fine. They're also rounding up the Germans asleep in the cottages. There must be quite a few of them barricaded in the headquarters building. As you can see, Lieutenant, they're pouring out a hellish fire. We haven't been able to break through. We've got to break through. The sun will be up in a minute. Well, it's my good. If a man could get close enough... It's impossible through that fire, Lieutenant. Now, now. Listen! Listen, men! I want you to keep on fighting. Fire! No matter what happens, keep on fighting and firing. What are you going to do? I have a few presents for a Nazi captain and his fanatics. A bundle of hand grenades. nothing for what they've done. Let them live. Let them see their German troops roll back. Their mates die in the ditches with no one to give them so much as a drop of water. Let them see their towns and villages blasted to the ground. Dying is so easy. We will let them live a hundred years. Let them beg death to come. And even death will turn away from this German carrier. Right. Look, Vedosia, a rainbow there in the east. A rainbow over our village. A rainbow. That's a good omen. Tonight on Words at War, we've brought you The Rainbow by Wanda Vasilevska. The radio dramatization was by Stanley Field. The cast included Ida Reese, Marin, Francis Cheney, Jeanette Dowling, Peter Capel, Earl Hammond, and Kermit Murdoch. The music was arranged and played by William Meter, and the production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Next week, Words at War will present the radio dramatization of Can Do, the story of the Sea Bees. This series of programs is brought to you in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime by the National Broadcasting Company and the independent radio stations associated with the NBC network. This is the National Broadcasting Company.